Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. I said, I said, I think it's time they see it through my eyes. Today, we're going to talk about the June 2024 book club choice. As always, links for book club are in the description down below. We'd love to have you join us. And in June, the poll was heavily weighted in favor of I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetis. This is my first Ruta Sepetis book. And it will not, by any sense of the imagination, be my last. So, um, as you can tell, I did, I don't know if it comes up, there you go annotate this book. I could have annotated a lot more than I did, but that would have been almost every page. So as I said in the announcement video, this is for me contemporary fiction. For a lot of you it will be historical fiction. I was a political science major in college. I remember the events of this book <clears throat> very, very well. I remember events talked about in this book very, very well. Um, and I expected this to be a very impactful read. It was. It is. It's also not a very easy read. It reads very quickly. The chapters are very short and punchy and but it is not an easy read. The subject matter is heavy. The consequences of this book are heavy. And there are implications for what's going on in our world today. So, let's talk about the book a little bit. The book is set in 1989 in Romania. It opens up, I want to say, end of September, beginning of October in Bucharest. And our protagonist is a 17 year old named Christian Florescu. He's known as Christy in the book. He is the only son of his parents. He has an older sister, status of factory worker. His mother cleans the apartment of the American diplomat. He is in high school. He wants to go to college. In a lot of ways, he's your normal 17 year old. And in a lot of ways, he is very much not. He's a 17 year old who weekly shares the duty of standing in line for food so that his family and his grandfather lives with him has something to eat not enough to eat but something to eat that is a normal and routine part of his day it is normal and routine for conversations in the family home to be guarded because everybody is spied upon he is a 17 year old with no hope and when i mean no hope i mean no hope he doesn't know who to trust he doesn't know if he can trust his friends he doesn't know who is spying on him who is not spying on him and that's just as the book opens up He's very quickly recruited to become a spy on those around him himself. And they use the carrot and stick technology or method to recruit him. And the carrot on the stick is medicine for his 
grandfather who has been diagnosed with leukemia, but they can't afford the cigarettes to bribe the doctors to treat his grandfather and to pay for the medication in cigarettes. So, already your heart just breaks for this child. He is a child. He's 17. He is forced into spying to attempt to save his grandfather's life by doing something he finds abhorrent. But he doesn't feel like he has a choice. And this book is filled with that. It is filled with the terror and the heartbreak and the hopelessness that surrounded everyday Romanians. I want to read you a quote, and this is from his grandfather is speaking. Mistrust is a form of terror. The regime pits us against one another. We can't join together in solidarity because we never know whom we can trust or who might be an informer. Sound familiar? Does it remind you of present day? Do you ask yourself why we are so divided? It's particularly in the States, why? Who gains from pitting one side of the political conversation against the other and vice versa? It isn't everyday people. And, and the sad truth is, is that humanity continually fails to learn from history. And this book drives that point home in a heartbreakingly beautiful manner. And if you notice on the cover, right there, there's a giant hole in the flag. And you may not have picked up on it when you, you know, bought the book and you picked it up and you looked at it. It doesn't immediately jump out at you. But you read the story and you find out why. <laughs> this is another one of those books I can't talk about in detail because it will spoil the book itself even though... We all know that what happened in December of the Christmas Day of 1989 in Bucharest in Romania, that isn't a surprise because that's easily, you know, looked up and understood and this is a fictional story and how that, on how that could have happened for one family, but at the same time, it easily could have been a non-fiction book. The author at the end of the book um, includes pictures of world leaders with the Ceausescu's of the magazine covers she references in the book of the cigarettes referenced in the book housing If you want to know what bravery looks like, if you want to know what the face of evil looks like, flip to the pictures in the back of this book. Those are real people who did really horrible things or who risked everything to stop the evil at the head of their nation. And this book <clears throat> is an amazing read, especially if you're a political science nerd like myself. However, it is not an impactful read because it is a great character study. It is not an impactful read because it does all this world building. It is 
very light on character development. It is not heavy on world building. And yet, despite those shortcomings, I loved this book. I will recommend this book. It makes me incredibly curious for the rest of her back catalog. Which is hopefully... less punchy than this book but this book had to be punchy this book had to be short it had to be it had to have for a musical reference it had to have a very staccato beat it had to go like this because otherwise events wouldn't make sense it, this wasn't a slow play out this was a movement a people a, a nation Finally seeing everyone around them break free. And taking the risk. And I do mean risk. To attempt to break free themselves. And it cost people their lives. It cost. A lot of lives. And yet. Despite the fact. That they risked it all. They had to. And they knew that. I loved this book. It is a truly amazing read. And people need to read it and understand that there are parallels to our own world today. And there are parallels for America. And we need to be reminded to treat everyone with human dignity and without suspicion and without fear. It sounds so simple. It sounds so rudimentary, and yet somehow humankind forgets this lesson over and over and over again. And there is a ha happily ever after in the book. There are moments that will bring you to tears. There are moments that you cannot believe that your protagonist is 17 years old and has the bravery <clears throat> that grown men lack. So, please do yourself a favor. Please pick up I Must Betray You if you have not read it. Please... Read it with an open heart and enjoy as much as possible this book. It. I wish there was more depth to it, but I understand why there's not. And I'm not dinging it for the lack of depth. This book is exactly what it needed to be. And I loved it. Please leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. And I will see you here next time. At the Protagonist Pub. I said, I said, I think it's time. They see it through my eyes. I pray for mistakes I never made.